Hi, I'm John Urschel. You don't have to look too hard to see that there's a lot of math and science in this collage. Geometry, color, light. But how to get all of that from here up to here? Let's visit with the artists at Icon for a close-up look at the stem behind art that's larger than life. Welcome to Icon Studios. We are a custom mural and design company and um, proud to announce this is our 25th year in business of uh, making art. Hey, hey how's John? it going? I'm Jeff. Hey John, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. What made you get into large scale murals? We started out painting in art school doing illustration, really small. And then we got out of school and ended up painting backdrops for the operas and the ballets. Mm -hmm. And those paintings are 30 feet tall and 100 feet wide. All of a sudden math had a huge role in it because you can't make that stuff up. It's too mm -hmm. large a scale. So we combined the tricks we learned and the math we learned in the theater and applied it to our illustration and ended up painting large scale murals. Did you ever think you'd be using this much math when you were kids? No way, I mean, that's why we got into art. <laughs> we didn't really like the math, uh, but we found out that math actually is a friend and a mm -hmm. very useful tool. What do you say we go take a look at the studio? Absolutely, Let's come go on back. back. All right, so what do we got here? So John, we are looking at a couple examples of our past projects. These are, mm -hmm. uh, these are all large paintings on the side of buildings wait, with wait, paintbrushes. Wait, is that brick right there? Yeah, that's, uh, that's brick. It's, this technique is called trompe l'oeil. It's French for fooling the eye. Are you fooled? I was fooled. This <laughs> is, that's impressive. So how do you go about doing that? Well, you're, you're asking about math. Well, this is a really mm -hmm. good example of this is called two-point perspective. Um, and without math, this absolutely doesn't work. This is another piece. Again, this is a large-scale painting on a building with a brush. Okay. And this is one-point perspective. All the lines converge back to one point in space. And the piece that we started talking about earlier, this uh, was done without the use of a computer because we didn't own one at the time. We had to fall back on the same techniques that they used back in the Renaissance, which really? was just math and a grid. Uh, this is the building that they gave us to start with. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 12 stories tall, about the size of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, that's where we ended up. All right, so you think you could show me some of these techniques? Absolutely. Let's go take a look. All right, let's do it. All right. Hey, hey so you, can you tell me a little bit about this process? This is a pencil drawing for one of the, the pieces that we've uh, designed for the Arts District. In this case, we wanted to speak about the creative process. Mm -hmm. So we have this conductor who's conducting the arts, and we have all these figures from the Arts District. These are actual people, actual artists that were represented. Who's this guy down here? Well, this represents a person. And so this is 120 feet tall, uh, 180 feet long. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a six foot person. So you can wow. see the challenge that we were up against. And the pencil drawing was actually the easy part. It's mm -hmm. getting the drawing from this scale yeah. to this scale. And how we huh. went about that is we took the, draw the line art and we laid a grid over our initial drawing. Mm -hmm. And we reproduced this grid on the building. And in, the, in this case, the, the squares were four feet by four feet. Gotcha. This must be a painstaking process. At this point, you can't do anything by hand. It's all angles and just points and scale, correct? Right. And after this is the color stage. Would you like to try one of these squares? Can I do this one? Sure, absolutely. Well, this is the architect scale, and we used, okay. we used a quarter inch scale, mm -hmm. and it's a tiny ruler compressed into that scale. And, you, and a quarter inch corresponds to what on the? Quarter inch equals a foot. Okay. So you use the math, plot, yeah. plot the points. Okay, I'm ready. So to start off, I'm going to be five inches away from the top left. I need a foot and a half. From the bottom left, I need a foot up from the bottom. This is line one. And now for line two, like so. And now the last thing is a dotted line. Perfect. It's a work right. of art. One square down and 730 to go. Maybe I'll just leave the rest to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me about the color. Okay, color. So on this piece, this, the figures, the colors matched and mixed individually one at a time. Mm -hmm. But the background was of a large enough scale to where we thought we could pre-mix some of these colors. So mm -hmm. what we did is we took the drawing and yeah. scale and then we, we laid out the colors and pre-mixed these in advance in the studio. So suppose a gallon of color number four. 
how much would this cover? Well, if you factor a gallon of paint covers mm -hmm. 400 square feet, really? you just take any given shape and mm -hmm. multiply the height times the length, you get a square foot rate. So that, that tells us we need to mix a half a gallon or two or five gallons mm -hmm. per color. We went through and plotted each one of these, mixed them all in advance, numbered them, and then when we got on site, we just matched the numbers and plugged them in. Fascinating. If I knew being an artist was just angles and math, who knows what profession I'd be in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, what are you doing? You know, just making a few improvements. Nice little math and science masterpiece. Nice. I call it iconic art. <laughs>